Hello there, my name is Karen Han. I'm an environmental health officer with ServiceNL. Today we are going to be talking about collecting bacteriological drinking water quality samples. In order to determine if your drinking water is bacteriologically safe to drink, routine testing for some indicator microorganisms is necessary. When testing confirms the presence of these groups of bacteria, there's potential for disease-causing organisms to be present. Protocoliforms are a group of bacteria that are naturally present in the environment. They are used as an indicator of overall water quality and the effectiveness of drinking water disinfection in public drinking water systems. E. coli is a fecal coliform that originates only in the intestine of humans and animals and are regularly excreted in feces in abundant numbers. Therefore, E. coli is used as an indicator of fecal contamination of drinking water. For the majority of public drinking water systems, representatives from ServiceNL collect the required bacteriological drinking water samples. However, there are instances when community representatives are asked to collect the sample on behalf of ServiceNL. Also, many homeowners collect bacteriological samples from their private drinking water supplies, such as drilled wells. To ensure that the samples are representative of the quality of water delivered through your faucet, these sample collection procedures are to be followed. By following these instructions, you will be ensuring that the samples will not be contaminated during sample collection. When choosing locations in your distribution system for the collection of bacteriological water quality, choose locations throughout the system that are representative of all conditions within your distribution system, such as beginning, middle, and end of the system. The number of samples to be collected from your system each month is based on the population serviced by your water system. The number of bacteriological samples to be taken is based on the following. For no distribution system, public water dispensing units or very small systems serving less than 100 people require one sample per month. Distribution systems serving less than 5,000 people requires four samples per month. A system serving a population of 5,000 to 90,000 people would need one sample for every 1,000 people per month. For more than 90,000 people, a minimum of 90 samples are required plus an additional sample for every 10,000 people per month. When choosing a sampling site, do not obtain the water sample from faucets that are outdoors, seldom used, dripping or leaking, dusty, dirty, or corroded. Other exceptions are swing or swivel faucets that have a single valve, too close to the sink basin, pointed upwards, located in janitorial closets and commercial sinks, not able to deliver a smooth stream of water, or connected to a screen aerator or water treatment unit. Samples should also not be collected from drinking water fountains, flexible hoses, or garden hoses. In addition, where possible, choose a smooth end faucet over a treaded end faucet. You must use the special sterile water collection bottles provided by the Public Health Laboratory or Government Service Center. This container has been sterilized and contains a special chemical in the form of a white powder that is required for the test. The bottle contains the chlorine neutralizing reagent, sodium thiosulfate. Avoid skin or eye contact with this reagent as it may cause irritation. In case of contact, immediately flush eyes with plenty of water or for skin, wash with soap and water. Get medical attention if any irritation develops. The bacteriological bottles can be picked up from any ServiceNL GSC office, public health laboratory, or hospital site. Bottles must not be rinsed before collecting the water sample. Do not remove the powder. The sample bottle must be kept closed until the sampler is ready to collect the sample. Make sure the tap or faucet is in good condition and remove any aerator, screen, or filtration systems prior to collecting the water sample. Turn on the cold water and allow the faucet to run for five minutes in order to clear the water service line. Adjust water flow so that a steady stream that is pencil width flows from the faucet. Do not adjust flow during sample collection. Remove the plastic protective seal from the bottle and discard it. If you leave the plastic seal on the cap, it can compromise the sample and will be rejected for analysis. Remove the screw cap from the bottle and hold on to it with the open end facing down. Do not lay the cap down or put the cap in your pocket. The inside of the screw cap or the mouth of the bottle must not be touched when collecting a water sample. In addition, do not allow the screw cap or mouth of the bottle to come into contact with any surfaces that may introduce contamination. 
Holding the sample bottle near the base, fill the bottle to the indicated 100 milliliter mark on the bottle. Do not overfill or underfill the bottle. Bottles that are filled above the fill line or below the fill line will be rejected for analysis. Immediately replace the cap and ensure that it is on securely. Shake the bottle. Keep the water sample refrigerated until delivery, but ensure that it doesn't freeze. Complete the label on the sample bottle and complete the requisition form enclosed with the sample bottle. Make sure that the collection date, collection time, water source, and contact information are completed as these are all required fields. Samples will be rejected for analysis if this information is not provided. Samples are to be delivered to your local government service center, a regional testing site, or the Newfoundland Public Health Laboratory for bacteriological testing. Routine samples are not accepted on Friday or in a day preceding a public holiday. Water samples that cannot be delivered to your local government service center, a regional testing site, or the Newfoundland Public Health Laboratory within two hours of collection must be kept refrigerated and delivered within 30 hours of collection. A cooler with ice packs should provide sufficient refrigeration. Samples must be tested within 30 hours of collection. Samples older than 30 hours are not suitable for testing and will be rejected for analysis. Samples cannot be accepted on a Friday or any day immediately preceding a public holiday. Results for bacteriological samples submitted by a private homeowner will be communicated directly to the private individual. Results for bacteriological samples collected from a public water system on behalf of a community will be sent to the appropriate environmental health officer with Service L, who will communicate the results to the community and ensure appropriate action is taken. When collecting bacteriological samples from your system, always measure the free and total chlorine residuals for each location. A training video on how to measure chlorine residuals is also available through the Department of Municipal Affairs and Environment. For more information on the collection of bacteriological samples, contact your local government service center or visit the ServiceNL website.